All right, today. All right, today. Here's what I want to talk about. Okay. All right. What we're going to do today, we are going to go through just one or two notes here real quick just to talk about something with vectors that I haven't really discussed yet. Uh, and then I want to talk about, um, stop. Uh, then what I want to go through next is I want to uh, talk about your practice semester test. My goal today is to do the second page. I know the second page has more than three. I said we're going to do about three a day. I, I'm going to do more today because I'm gone tomorrow, and then tomorrow we only have to do two on the video. Where are you so, tomorrow? I'm at a funeral. So, um, so book check in. I'm sorry. So, all right. Book check ins on Monday. Make sure you have your book. Um, notice all late work due tomorrow. If you have any LIs, missing scores, blanks, M's in the grade book, all late work's due tomorrow. Even though I'm not here, I'll come back at the school and I'll pick them up. Test retakes were due today. Uh, MAPS test is due. Um, make sure you're getting that done. Semester test is Tuesday coming up. All of your practice guides, all of your practice guides are are going to be due on Tuesday. Hey, close the computer. So, close. All right. Um, again, make sure you're keeping track on this. Now, sub tomorrow. Um, I don't know who it is yet. They haven't told me. Um, if they're computer technology illiterate. I will have the video, it happens, uh, I'll have the video on my website, I'll post it tonight to make sure it's online. I recommend you bring headphones tomorrow in case the sub literally can't figure out how to hit play and get it on the projector so correctly. Gonna, so, so you could watch the video on your own. It'll go through some basic notes and do a review of the next two problems in your practice guide and then you can just free work after that. Does that make sense? So it's a pretty easy day. We do have homework that's due Monday. Okay, that's your page 409, 419. It's still due Monday, so keep that in mind. Question? Yes. On the video, will you go all the way through said problem? Yes. Okay. I will. That's it. Just, just to make sure that you guys had. Yeah, just to make sure. I just to make sure. Are we going to fly through it like. No, it, it'll be pretty detailed. Okay. That, sure, that sure wasn't very detailed. Yeah. I liked it. I kept it quick. It's going to be detailed or quick? It's going to be quick. So why hey, you, hey, we are, why you we are ready. Other. When, I have, when I don't have time. We go quick. All right, we good? Okay, you need to take notes today. Here we go. So you're saying you don't have time for us? Is that what you're saying? We're so, no. <laughs> All right. All you have is time for us. All I have is time. All right. So, here we go. Just kick me out of your room. So. What I want to talk about today, this is called systems of equations. This is something that you've had back in Algebra 2, um, and I want to talk about it with vectors, because the idea is that um, vectors can actually intersect, right? So you could, have, you could have two vectors that are crossing each other, like this, and what I want is the vector that actually meets these two, okay? like the actual position, like the spot. So the idea is that how you actually solve this, how you do a system, where you can actually find intersection points of lines. This is, um, there's two ways of doing it. There's a substitution and there's an elimination, which I call linear combination method. I want you to write both of them down today. My goal is to go through two problems, one of each type, and then tomorrow we'll do the same thing. Does that make sense? Now the reason I'm doing this, the book had these problems in the system part. I did not assign them as homework. The reason why, we didn't talk about it in the last couple days. I wanted to get you a smaller assignment, but this stuff is on semester test. You'll have one of them on the semester test, just only one. one. It's pretty easy. This is literally Algebra 2, Algebra 1 work. I'm just reviewing it with you because it is in this section, and I want you to know it before you go to pre-calc, or to go to calculus, I mean, for next year. Okay, because we have to solve systems in calc. It's like one of the first chapters we get. Question. How many? Yeah. How many questions of each type on this chapter are on the semester? How many vector problems are on the semester? Type? Yeah, how many chapter six problems are on the Two. Test? How two many chapter three problems? There, there's three because it's a system, but two. How many chapter three problems? Uh, two. What's the so chapter three for each one? Yeah, it's basically two for each. I think. Are you going to choose three. difficult Drop. problems or just think very easy questions? questions. Mr. Ward. Um, I was first. Do you have extra problem issues? <laughs> no. You can print can it out. You can do it later. Question. Are you super excited to have me in class again next year? Always. Moving on. Here we go. So. Wait, are you doing Calc and... Yeah, he's doing Calc. He's doing five of them. All right. Just for a year, and consumer goes to the business teacher. Are you going to get wrecked, or are you going to have fun? Why is it here? Why is 
not worth that. They might get it and these ones make sense? They work? So do you just do everything in your head right there to make sure they're going to work? No, no, no. Let me, let me look here. Let me make sure they're going to work here. Yes, they work. I'm surprised. No. I don't like change your way. It's going to work, right? All right. Hey, real quick. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about the system here. All right. This is a system of equations. Now, you can rearrange the problems. You can rearrange the, the problems so that they're in this form. Um, how you rearrange, if you move things across equal signs, they become positive or negative. You can get the, the numbers out front. You can get rid of fractions if you multiply the numbers, uh, whatever's on the denominator. Now, how I want to solve this, this system, you have to pick one of the letters. That's how we do it. Um, I always pick the easy one. Um, let's pick, let's pick, yeah, the, let's pick the Y's. Let's pick the Y's. They're probably the easier than the Y's. They're probably the easier so, Can we do it with the so I'm gonna multiply by negative so two. I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna multiply the second row by two and in fact if you make it a negative two like you said it makes it like one step faster because you, whatever letter you pick you want to make them the same digit so I pick the y's I want to make them the same digit but opposites if they're already opposites you don't have to multiply by negatives you just multiply by the number to make them already the opposites so this is the top row is gonna stay the same. The bottom row, I'm going to multiply by negative 2, so this turns out to be negative 10x, negative 2y, and a negative 14. Now, when we solve this, this is going to turn out to be, um, once I have this, and we have my letters already the same number, and they're opposites, you can just add straight down. 3 and negative 10 make negative 7. You add straight down, those cancel out. You've done this problem, haven't you? Negative 7? No, I made it up on the spot. How so, did you know that was and negative 7? Then, then divide it out, and I get 1. Okay, all right, so we have that. Once you have the one, you have to plug it back in. I always tell you just plug it back in one of the originals, plug it into the top one, it's kind of easiest. Now, what letter is that one going to go into? Six, X. X, has to go into X, X squared. because that letter tells me. Okay, so this is gonna be three times one plus 2y equals 7. This turned out to be a 3 plus 2y equals 7. You subtract the 3 across to make 4. And you get y is a 2. So there's your two numbers. That's a system. Okay. Again, you could do this with vectors because vectors have i and j components. And so you can figure out where they intersect and all that. Okay. Questions at all about what a system is? I think we kind of got it. All right. Let's move on here. Okay, um, let's move to the second type now. Second type is where we do it by substitution. Yeah. Okay. So let me uh, let me make up a number here. I'll make up a problem. So oh, wait. Before I erase, does anyone need this still? So are you okay. done? I'm, I'm done. Yeah. Good. All right. Mental picture. Eleven x plus seven y. Eleven x plus seven y. Eleven x plus seven y. Eleven x plus sixteen Equals 16Q. Oh, no. This one's not going to work. I'm sorry. It's not going to work. 17. The numbers are working. My brain tells me they're not working. It's got 25. Dang it. All right. And let's go with Y equals, um, let's see. Um, y equals 2X plus, plus, plus 30. Now let's just go. Let's one. go 18. 22. Let's 18. Do that. We can't do that. Uh, that's not working. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. No. I did the math. It'll work. All right. Here we go. Let's just do that. All right. So how this works. Um, now on this bottom one, there is a plus zero on this, even though it's not written. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the same problem, but we're going to do it by substitution. Can we make it so, subtract? No, so here's the idea. We're going to take out the y in the top equation, and we're going to plug this mess into where the y is. That's how you substitute. You have to get one letter by itself, and you plug the other mess into the other equation for that letter. So you have to do it this way? No, you can do it by the other method. But you'd have to rearrange this problem to get it back. Um, so if I go to that top equation, I'm going to take out the letter y, and I'm going to plug in the 2x into it. It's 2x plus 0, but it's just 2x. Now when I solve this, this is 14x plus 11x, which turns out to be 25x's. And you divide it over, and we get x is a 1. Once we have that, 
Then I can plug it back in, and I'm going to take the one and plug it back in, and I can solve the y. I'm going to plug it back with the second equation here. Uh, the second equation is kind of easy. I'm going to take the 2x plus 0 and plug in the 1 into the x. So it looks like my y turns out to be a 2. Questions, comments about uh, the second style of system? Okay, I, I'm betting on most people won't pick this yeah, method. Um, most people like the, the, the linear combination of the elimination method uh, because you can get this problem to be one of those. You just move the 2x over, make it negative, and then you have negative 2x plus y equals 0, and then you can stack and you can do the whole step again. The same stuff. It just This one's easy if they already have a letter by itself. So then you can just plug it into the other one. The problem is knowing how to distribute and how to solve, and hopefully it works out nice and pretty. All right, questions, comments? All right, take out your practice guide, please. Did everyone get a practice semester test yesterday? Yes. Did you? Yeah. Good. Yes, Mr. Ward. Good. Let's go through it. I got, I got to do that second page day. I didn't get one, Mr. Ward. You didn't? Okay. What's <laughs> your deal? All right, here we go. Mr. Ward, have you ever seen a mega desk? What? A mega desk. Just make the like, You say you watched, but you like to see a mega desk? No. It's even the first couple seasons. Dustin. How many seasons? Make the triple desk or tri desk or something. I cannot do that. All right, here we Should go. Do the standing what's, desk? It, what's it called? Uh, oh, what's that one called? Uh, I can't remember. What's, 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 all right, yesterday we did problems one through three. Today we're going to start with number four and go through the rest. Now, Larson, to answer your question earlier that you asked me, Larson, yes, sir. to answer your question earlier, you will want that property sheet. You will. So you will want it for the test day. So you will want to make a copy after we're done. How much time will I have? Yes. Okay. We'll be done here in about probably 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. All right. Everyone else have one. Nicole, do you need one? Yes, please. Okay, here you go. I mean, I can just like write it on my notebook paper, yeah. but that would be annoying. Okay. Would you want one? Thank you. Everyone's got one. All right, now the the formula sheets, the property sheets you guys have, you are allowed to use them on semester test day. If you've already lost it, do it like Larson's doing. Just make a copy of somebody else's so you have. Them. There are certain things you have to have on there. You have to have the unit circles. You have to have the half angle formulas on there. You have to have the special triangles on there. You need them. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go through number four, and we're gonna continue on. I'm gonna hit the lights. Ooh. Actually, no, I better not because I, I, want to see I better not. Mr. Burns is taking it. Yeah, I better leave the lights on. You better. All right. Okay. So hey, let's walk through this. Now, this this part right here, you want to convert this to degrees first, and then we're gonna use the unit circle on your property sheet. So this thing right here. You're going to take, you're going to convert this angle 2 pi over 3. You're going to multiply by 180 over pi because I want to get this back to degrees. I know the book says you don't have to. I like to get it back to degrees to know what type of angle you're dealing with here. The, the pi's cancel out. Uh, if I divide by 3, that's 60. So multiply by 2, that's 120 degrees. So we just have to take the sign of that. Now, all we have to do is take the sign of 120. The thing is, 120 is on your property sheet. Um, and if you don't know how that works, it's putting the angle in the second quadrant. That's a 60 degree angle in the second, because 120 degrees is here. And if you didn't have your property sheet, you could still technically do this type of math. You just have to do the sign of 60 instead of 120. So that's a special. Area. It's a special triangle. Special but triangle. if you have your, if you have the, if you have your property sheet, just find 120 on the unit circle, and the answer for this problem is the second number on its on its compressing, yeah, which cool. is root three over two. So that's all it is. That's the answer. That's the sign of 120 on the property sheet. It'll be something easy where it's either using your your unit circle or you can draw the special triangles. Justin, what's your question? That's what I was going to ask. Uh, yeah. you, could, you could do both. It's going to be something easy. It'll be something where it's nice and clean, so it's testing whether you know how to find on the unit circle, or you could set up the, the triangle and just do it the old-fashioned way. Perfect. Okay, we're good? Yep. Wait, no, no. No, nope, we're not. Wait, are you? Drossy's still writing. No, it's Nickel. No, Drossy is still... Yeah, yeah, I need it. So. Drossy's still writing Nickel now? Mr. Ward, do you want to steal Nickel is one of the cheapest metals. Would you like to turn your nickel? cup into gold? What? Would you like to turn your cup into gold? No. You could do the bottom layer and do like a triple layer. Ooh. Oh, dude, it's not actually gold, it's brass. Yeah. Justin, don't tell him that. Okay, 
We're good? Solid no, gold, it'll cost you 50 bucks. Yeah. We can literally <laughs> change it. What's your favorite subject in school besides math? Science is for calculus. Yeah. Alright. Okay, we're good? Moving on. Just put a comma every three words and that makes it correct. Who's that? Take a word. That's the answer we need. Yep. Square root of three over two. It's easy. It's going to be something short and simple. Okay, alright. Let's move on to number four. Or five. This problem is by far probably the most challenging one on this page. Let's not do The that. reason being is that it's going to test your knowledge and your, and your memory on how we drew trick functions again, the waves. So on this wave graph, I'm going to draw it for you right now. This wave graph has been shifted. It's got a shift up to two. It's going to have, it's going to be three times taller. This is the amplitude. The amps. 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 And it's negative, so it's actually flipping the graph over. And then this number is affecting the period or frequency of it. Okay? Uh, and that affects the four hash marks going across, if you remember that stuff. So here's how it's going to work. I'd like you to draw kind of a mock x axis, kind of like the Cartesian coordinate plane. Like a mock sketch. Um, yeah, per se. Um, we're going to go up two, because that is my shift. It's going up two, and I'm going to draw a little. A uh, dash line going across. So that's my vertical shift. That's going to be my new like origin line. That's where everything's centered over. The line of origin. Um, and, I do. Well, and this is when you go over pi, right? And yeah, yeah, go, yeah. So like, all right. Pi, yeah, yeah. Pi. So this thing, this three, is how far above the line and below the line I'm going. So I'm going to go three up from here. So I'll hit five, and I'll go three down from there, which is negative one. Again, how I know that it's three is that that amplitude number. So that's how far up and down I'm going. Oh, yeah. Okay, Larson, you looking for something in particular? My book. Are you going to do the easier one? I don't know where it's at. What? Are you going to do the easier one? You're not going to do tangent or cotangent? I'm picking sine or cosine. That's all I pick. Sine or cosine. Sine or cosine. You're 100%. I'm picking one or the other. I flip the coin tonight and I pick. Sine or cosine. Sine or cosine. I'm not gonna pick some weird obscure one. You're flipping a coin. Flipping a coin, whatever one. It Can you flip on. it right now? Flip it right now. Nope. Just flip it right now. Tell us heads or tails, and then we'll guess which one means sine or cosine. All right, here we go. We ready? Flip a coin, Siri. We're good. All right, here we go. It's heads. It was heads. It was heads, Mr. Ward. I asked Siri. Got it. On my watch. Okay. And you like apples, so you know. All right, what's heads? So, for cosine. Cosine. For cosine, its normal its normal object goes out to two pi. That's where it normally goes out to. The problem is, we have a number that's affecting my period. Um, there's a number up front, so you have to take the normal length, which is two pi, and divide by this number that's in front of x. If your number is a fraction, you divide by the fraction. If it's a number, you divide by the number. So I I have to divide by two pi. So it looks like when I divide these, I get the number get one. one. That is my new fourth oh mark down the road. Wait, that's a new Wait, so why did you buy by two pi? I don't understand. It's always the number that's in front of x. It normally always hits two pi. Can I take a guess of what other ones are going to be then? It normally hits two pi. That's why I put the two pi on the board. Can I take a guess of what other ones are going to be? No. No. Right. Let me finish these. Okay. So now we're gonna we're gonna cut this number in half. We're gonna cut it in half again. We're going to multiply that one by three. That's just how quick that works. Again, I am checking every marker, everything that you have on this. I'm checking, are you shifting it? Are you labeling the numbers up and down? Are you marking my four hash marks going across correctly? Now all I have to do is draw a cosine. Cosine normally looks like this. This is a normal cosine graph. It looks like a U-shape. But, but what we're doing is since we have a negative, this graph is flipped over, so now it's going to be like a little hilltop. So it's going to be like this. It's going to be like a little hilltop. And it's going to be starting here, it's the lowest point, going up to its peak, coming back down to its lowest point, and that's what the graph should look like, because we flipped it over. And again, why not it's hitting negative one and five? Because I'm hitting three above and three below the midline. You put arrows on that? Okay, you can. Um, it's it, it would just keep oscillating back and forth. I'm just doing one period length of this because this thing would go up and down on the other sides and keep going. It just way up and down. Now the other one, if we're doing sine graph, you do the sine graph basically the exact same way. The only difference between a sine graph is it would look like this. Sine graph starts at the origin and goes up and down like this. That's a sine graph. It looks like an S for sine. 
That doesn't look like an S at all. So, <laughs> well, if, you, if you kind of flip it the other way. It looks like if you have a mountain that goes into a valley. Sure, called that. And then it's like a C. <laughs> How do I remember that that means sign? sign. Oh, mountain to a valley cosine, equals sign. Cosine, cosine is like a C. Oh, and then sign looks like an S. Sure. 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 Are you people blind? No. Watch like whatever it works. Sure. Sure. Work. sure. Coming on. Sure. sure. We're good? Sure. Uh, uh, all right. Sure. Oh. Right, right on. Oh. <laughs> hey. Oh, oh, I know these ones. I don't have my problem shoes. What's your problem? Hey, hey, the more talking you do, the less I'm going to do today. Shh. I'll, I'll move on to 9 and 10 tomorrow, no matter what. I can stop here. Let's not do that. Right on. All right. The next one, again, is one where you have to have those property sheets. You can actually use those bonus ones that you made where where you had the one with all the little tabby things, that thing, you can use that for this one. You have to add angles together or subtract angles to make the 165. The angles you're adding or subtracting have to be from your property sheet. So if we want to do 120 and 45, fine. So you have to pick angles that are on the property sheet. So 120 plus 45. I liked it. You could add, you could subtract numbers to make 165. But if this is it, if you use that little property sheet, the sum and difference formulas, it says, you take the sine of the first angle, cosine of the second, plus cosine of the first, sine of the second. So it's basically just flip flop, basically. Um, but that's, this is a formula for sine. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to rattle off the answers for each of these. Each of these are fractions by themselves. And so if you use your property three sheet, over two. so yeah, so sine of 120, we did this one earlier, that was root 3 over 2. Cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of 120 is a negative half. And sine of 45 is root 2 over 2. Again, how I'm finding this so fast, they're on your, they're on your unit circle, I have it memorized. So, have all of it memorized? <laughs> they had to know it in high school. We weren't, we weren't given the property sheet. You just had to know it. What's there? Five, six. I had a rule to memorize. So. No, not five, six. No. All right. Now, What's seven all we have to do is multiply them together. So here we go. So if you multiply, <laughs> that's root six <laughs> minus root two, and this is oh. all over four. Now, how I got that answer. This part right here is root six over four. This part right here is a negative root 2 over 4. And when you add them together, they have the same denominator, the 4, so you can just keep the 4 on the bottom. But you just add straight across the top, which is a root 6 and a negative 2, basically, or negative root 2. Okay, this is the type of answer I'm looking for. I can almost guarantee your answer will look something like that. Because, because it didn't matter what angles you picked. Um, if you if you pick angles that are using the you know the unit circle, the answers always come out with root twos, root sixes. They're just in different orders. Sometimes they are negative, sometimes they're positive. They flip flop every now and then. So I'm looking for how are you setting it up? Are you writing that on the formula? Are you getting your answers from your unit circle? And are you getting the final answer? This problem is probably worth about four points. So don't skip it. Show all. Uh, definitely seven and eight. Can I use an imaginary number if I want to? What about um? What about? I was just wondering. Three. Seven, seven, eight. Eight. Seven, eight. Is it three where it's like six? Three. Hey. Three. That's where you have to list all. Yeah, that's of six. That's worth quite a bit. That's six. These are worth seven or eight. Whoa. Why? Because you have to draw the triangle. Can we use a little foldy sheet on the test? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you just eat paper. <laughs> We're to do this That's your lesson plan, remember, Mr. Stop. All right. Hey, are we good? Yes. We did it. We All right. Number seven. All right. Hey, we're going on number seven. Okay, let's go through number seven here. Yeah, you gotta write that. Is your battery dying again? You've been doing that the past couple of days. Yeah, that's not important. Unchargeable battery once a Oh, you remember to. Is it going bad? No. Are you needing new ones? No. Alright, seven, eight. Here we go. Alright, seven, eight. Now, I'm going to get you started on these. I will not finish them. Um, these are the ones you have to use the double angles. So, um, they're going to give you hints on where you're going to be. So, on this one, they just tell you it's supposed to be your uh, quadrant two. So, I'm going to draw the triangle in quadrant two. Um, and so, this is my angle here. And the idea is that. Um, we're going to have the 12, um, sine is 12 over 13, so that's 12 over 13. If you do the Pythagorean theorem, you figure out this is a negative 5. If I did it, All right. oh. So, 
Oh, and again, it's negative percent in the second quadrant. All right, now that we have this, we have to rattle off the double angle formulas for these three. Here's what I want to see. I want to see that you had the formula written down on paper, and you plug in your numbers, and you can move on to the next part. But you you, don't, write you don't have to solve it. Yeah, so this is what I want to see. So if you do the sine, so I'll do the first two for you. Sine of 2 theta. Do tan. So, sine and fine, tan. I can do sine and tan. All right, so sine of 2 theta. This is 2 times sine times cosine. That's the formula on your property sheet. That's the double angle. So what you have to do is plug in your numbers from this triangle into that. So sine of this triangle, you should get it wrong, it's 12 over 13, they have it listed. And cosine for this triangle is negative 5 over 13. That's all you have to do. You do not have to solve or multiply. I want to see the formula, Thank you. and you know what numbers to plug in. Okay? All right, you got to do cosine by yourself. So cosine, you just pick one of them. There's three of them for cosine. Uh, for tangent. For tangent. Yes. Even on the test, we don't have to solve it? Nope, you just have to do that. That's awesome. Okay, for tangent. So again, you're going to have to use cosine on your own. Tangent formula is this. It's two times tangent over one minus tangent squared. Okay, now, here's the pro problem that we have. Okay, you have to make sure that you did the Pythagorean theorem to figure out all the numbers there. Some people are really good. And look at my answers. Notice, my answers do not have sines and cosines in them. For some reason, there's somebody that keeps writing cosine and sines in there, and I count them wrong instantly. You just miss points for every time you put sine and cosines. They should just have numbers in the final answers. So, I'll get to your question here in a minute. So, your final answer on this one. Tangent is 12 over negative 5 for that triangle over 1 minus tangent squared. So, this is 12 over negative 5. So, and that's, that's your answer. Like, that's tangents. You don't have to go further and simplify. I just want to see, you know the formula, you know how to plug the numbers. Because I trust you can type that in a calculator yeah, we have to simplify them out. No. 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 Question. Question. When we have the semester test, will it be a nice, easy Pythagorean theorem yeah. number? Nice, easy. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Do you have the semester test made already? Then? No. I, it, it's the outlines there. It's just, I don't have to find the official numbers. You don't have the numbers decided yeah. on yet? No. You should use as many one just so. possible. No. Okay, hey, we give it a seven. Now, I did not finish cosine. You have to do cosine by yourself, but I did two out of the three. We just did it. Go. Okay, let's move on. Eight. What's the answer? Is everyone good there? 20. All right. Now, these, these next ones, these are the ones. You're doing the exact same work on the next ones, but this one, you have to have the half angle formulas written down. Because I do not have the half angle formulas printed on your property sheet. You had to write them in there yourself. So if you're making a copy of somebody's uh, property sheet, you better make sure in the book you go find those half angles. Okay. That's going to be the third quadrant. Okay, third quadrant, I agree. 180 and 270, so we're in the third. Um, so if we're doing the third quadrant, tangent is 4 over 3, and both of these numbers are negative. Because you're in the third quadrant, they cancel it out to make positive. If I do the Pythagorean theorem, I get the answer is 5. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down, buddy. So that's doing the tangent. Tangent is positive in the third because the two negative signs cancel a lot. So knowing where those numbers go, because tangent means opposite over adjacent. And it's so Coachella. And, and so now we're going to do the half angle formula. So I'm going to do two of these. Which two? Uh, what's your favorite part of the Coachella? Cosine and tangent. Doesn't matter. What? Cosine and tangent. Boom. We're going to do these two. Boom. Okay. Nice job. Okay. Wall. Cosine and tangent. So here's, here's how it works. For cosine, cosine's half angle formula is this. It's plus or minus radical one plus cosine, whatever your angle is, over two. Okay, that's your formula for cosine. The problem is it's got a plus or minus sign up front. You have to figure out which one's plus or minus. What I mean by that? You're in the third quadrant, okay? We're going to cut the angle in half, right? We're finding half angles. You're right. If, you, if you're at like a 200 degree angle, right? That's the third quadrant angle, 200. And you cut it in half, you're in the second quadrant. Right? 200 cut in half is 100. You're in the second quadrant. So cosine is negative there. When you cut the angle in half, you're still going to be negative. Because you're going to end up in the second quadrant. Now, all I have to do is plug in my cosine from that triangle. So that triangle's cosine is negative 3 over 5. And I have a two on the bottom. Done. Move on to the next one. Notice there's no cosine written in there anymore. No, how do you 
do you do that, yeah. that insta points wrong. How do you know what number it is? Insta points. Oh, um, I just picked a number Stop. that was in that in that oh, range. So I just picked Stop. a nice easy number. Stop. Okay, we're good. I'm trying to learn. Wait a second. All right. So next one, we're going to tangent. Tangent. All right, here we go. Tangent. Tangent has three different ones. So good choice in the tangent. I always pick this one for some reason. This is the. Uh, this is the one that I always pick for some reason. It's just the go-to. Uh, this is the one that doesn't have radicals or anything like that. Again, um, if you need these formulas, I, uh, they have them. Bless you. Uh, they have them all on five hundred and ten. Uh, 614, so, but those are all your half angles, it's pretty straightforward, all right, so 614 if you want to write those in there yourselves, all right, so all I have to do is plug in cosine, which we already found a little bit ago, and I have to plug in sine, sine of that triangle is negative 4 over 5, because again, I'm plugging in the sine, or the cosine and the sine, and I'm getting those numbers from this triangle doing so So then now we have to do sine by yourself. You have to do sine by yourself. Notice, you write the formula down, you plug in the numbers, you're done, you move on. Sine will be positive. Sine will be positive because you're going to end up in the second point. What if you just plug it in? One minus. It just depends what you plugged in, what you got wrong. Well, like, say you got everything right, but you just did the square root of all that. I know. I just prefer to see the square root. Oh, we just need that. All right, so we're gonna be right ahead. Okay. All right, that's it for today. Tomorrow, even though I'm gone, the video will have nine and ten. Bring headphones in case technology fails. You can just go work on your own, watch the video. We can't have technology fail. So, what are you question. Doing? So, do you think the world could end tomorrow and with the technology faster? Oh. I could see. Not we like could. end, but we could go back to the Stone Age. Okay, honestly.